This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I'm Ambrose Panico. I'm excited to introduce Dr. Healy joining us here in the studio, where we're going to talk about artesia and some secondary analysis. So, uh, number one, I'll, I'll, I'll start with, you know, I think everybody was super excited, Artesia and Noah, we were gonna see this magic number that was gonna make our lives easier, and it's not, as things in medicine are, not that simple. Um, so we've kind of been, a lot of us been waiting with bated breath about what's coming next, like what are our secondary analysis gonna show. So specifically, um, with this analysis, you guys just said, okay, let's see if we can start to make sense of this, and you took a very logical first crack at it and said, Chad's score like we're gonna use Chad's Basque and see where that gets us with the data so if you can I would love for you to give our viewers just a little like the high notes of what they need to take away from what what you guys found sure so we we all appreciated that the main results were informative less stroke uh, but more bleeding and that was an incomplete picture and people need to make more granular decisions because patients are complicated and as you say we started with Chad's Vast because that's what we're used to for clinical atrial fibrillation it's not perfect but it works reasonably well and so we divided up our population into three groups less than four greater than four or equal to four and that was roughly equal in number and then looked at how they did over time but before that even happened we looked at the actual characteristics of these individuals and they were very different so when you were less than four only about one percent had a history of stroke only about 20 percent had a history of vascular disease cerebrovascular peripheral vascular cardiovascular and when you were greater than four these numbers were 20 percent prior stroke and 70 percent vascular disease so fundamentally different so maybe not all chad's vas factors are the same but what we did show is that in that highest risk group, greater than four, which was about 25 to 30 percent of the population, uh, there was a clear reduction in stroke risk. So over three and a half years of the trial, uh, stroke risk was reduced by nearly four uh, percent, yielding an, a number needed to treat of around 25 patients to prevent one stroke over that time. And there really, you know, there wasn't uh, as large an increase in, in bleeding risk. Of course, there was increased bleeding, uh, but uh, the reduction in stroke was greater. Uh, what was also noted is we prevented a lot of large strokes, you know, disabling, moderate or severely disabling strokes. On the other hand, when the stroke risk score, Chad's Vasque, was less than four, uh, there was no appreciable reduction in stroke at all over three and a half years, but there was an excess of bleeding. And so with those two guideposts and the over four, we, we concluded that in general, those patients you should consider treating, while the less than four, except possibly for the group with a prior stroke, and there were a few, but for less than four in general, uh, should consider not treating as an initial strategy. And then for the equal to four, the stroke risk was low, but it did go down about 2.25% over three and a half years, and not much of a price to play in bleeding. And these, these absolute differences were significant on the stroke side. So uh, I think it, you know, it's not perfect. We will do more work on echo predictors, blood markers, uh, how risk factors were treated and evolved. But as far as clinicians today or tomorrow, I think it gives us a better starting point than we had, say, six months ago. Couldn't agree more. I think anecdotally, you know, we've a lot of, for many of us for many years, we've been saying we do really good job at over anticoagulating low risk patients and under anticoagulating high risk patients. And I think I'm with you, like, we need to know better what these risk factors truly mean. It's not just a, a fancy calculator that we can use. You bet. Um, so super excited for what's to come. Uh, you know, I have a bit vested interest since I also participated in the trial yeah, for Artesia. Top and rolling site, by the way. Um, so oh, very fun to have this conversation with you. Thank you for joining us. We all look forward to what's to come next. So we'll stay uh, engaged and can't wait to hear more. Great, right, thank you. This is Ambrose Panico for Heart Rhythm TV. You can like us below and don't forget to follow us for more on Twitter, X, and LinkedIn.